I'm wondering if you have hypothyroidism. We're yes. going to go over the top 10 signs and symptoms of hypothyroidism. I love it. I'm Dr. Paul Zalzo. I'm Dr. Brad Weening. Welcome to Talking with Doc. Some of these things are it's not are like sensitive for hypothyroidism, but right. not specific. Some of these signs or symptoms may be an indication of something else that's going on or nothing that's going on. Right. But together, some of these do. Yeah, and a lot of them are very, very common, right? Super common. Yeah, and people are like, well, I just have this and this and this. I'm not really sure what it is. If you have some of these, it might be worth a chat with yeah. your family doctor to say, hey, do yeah. I maybe have hypothyroidism? Yeah. Sorry, family doctors, to all the people that are going to be rushing mm -hmm. in and saying, hey, I think I've happened with these vague symptoms. <laughs> That's right. Okay, so number one, vague. Mm -hmm. Let's start with fatigue. Who doesn't have fatigue? Well, this is the trouble. So if you have chronic low energy, feel tired, despite maybe relaxing or mm -hmm. getting good sleep, mm -hmm. one of the reasons that you can have fatigue is because of hypothyroidism. Because the way that it affects your metabolism, it makes you feel tired all the time. It's unrelenting. And if this is a change of the way you've normally been feeling. Yeah, and disproportionate to your sleep cycle and your lifestyle. So if you, if you feel like you're way more tired than everybody else, you might have hypothyroidism. Okay, number two, just as vague is weight gain. Yes. Who doesn't feel like they're gaining weight? Right. But together with some of these other symptoms, weight gain is one of the signs of hypothyroidism. And often in these people, these are people who are exercising regularly and maybe are reducing their caloric consumption or modifying their diet to try to lose weight and just are banging up against the wall with no progress because it literally slows down your metabolism or your basal metabolic rate. So the amount of calories that you burn the average day essentially doing nothing goes down. So your because of hypothyroidism. Slowly trickles on. Might be hypothyroidism. Okay. Number three is cold insensitivity. Along the same lines, as your metabolism increases, the amount of heat that your body generates and your body's ability to modify your temperature goes down with hypothyroidism. So you become cold sensitive or cold insensitivity. So you're always cold. You're putting a sweater on when it's 90 degrees outside. Mm -hmm. Like right now here in Ontario, mm -hmm. if you see someone who is outside wearing a hoodie and it's really hot and muggy, Maybe they have hypothyroidism. Say, excuse me, sir. Yeah, have you checked your thyroid lately? <laughs> I believe you might have hypothyroidism. Do you feel fatigued? Are you That's gaining right. weight? That's right. Now the next one is dry skin and hair. Okay. Okay. And you've tried things. You put on moisturizer. You put a humidifier in your house. Yep. Relative humidity is like 80%, and you still have dry skin and hair. Yeah. That could be a sign. Right. And the reason is sebum. Sebum. Same thing you get lying around on the beach too long. <laughs> That's right depending on the country that you live in. Although nowadays, the veins are just small. It's too much sebum. Yeah, yeah, yeah. a lot of sebum. Okay, number five is constipation. So, mm -hmm. similarly, because your thyroid hormone regulates your metabolism mm -hmm. and all your metabolic functions, mm -hmm. the rate that your colon contracts or mm -hmm. peristalsis or moves stuff through your GI tract goes down. So the more time it spends in there, often the water's absorbed, so you have firmer stools that are more difficult to pass and constipation. So this can be a more vague sign. There are lots mm -hmm. of reasons to be constipated. But if you eat a healthy diet with lots of fiber, you're constipated, mm -hmm. might be hypothyroidism. Uh-huh. And the next one is depression. Okay. Not just because you're constipated, but you are getting depression because hypothyroidism, it's part of the hormonal axis. And when you start messing around with some hormones, it's going to affect other hormones. It's going to affect your neurotransmitters, your serotonin yeah. levels, yep. and things like that that contribute to your mood are affected. So depression is another one of the common symptoms of hypothyroidism. And this is independent of being cold, having gained a bunch of weight, being tired, like you mean, who wouldn't be depressed? <laughs> like this is the thing, no, right? It's an independent symptom. Independent symptom. Yeah. Okay, number seven is muscle weakness. So, because your body has less of an ability to generate energy and increase your metabolism, your muscles' ability to contract and perform daily function are reduced. So, you have muscle weakness. So, reduced um, power strength as well as reduced endurance. And which is also part of aging. We've talked about this sarcopenia 100%. before, and you're seeing as you're getting older, you're working out just as much, but you're not getting stronger. That is a thing, but this is a change in your muscle strength, more of a sudden change, a muscle weakness that you're noticing, noticeable to you. Yeah. That could be a sign of hypothyroidism. Okay. Number eight. What was number eight again? Memory problems. And brain fog. Brain fog. Yeah. Memory problems and brain fog. That's number eight. Um, again, part of the neurotransmitter system in your brain, part of the uh, metabolic rate of your brain is all affected by your thyroid hormone. Uh, so hypothyroidism can lead to brain fog, memory loss. Yes, your ability to concentrate, your ability to form memories. And I feel like brain fog wasn't even like a thing. Like five years ago, did you ever hear brain fog? No. And no. I, I feel like there are a lot of chronic diseases where yeah. brain fog is a component. Yep. Because yep. when our bodies 
uh, manage things very, very tightly. So when one thing gets disrupted, it kind of affects all the systems. It comes up a lot in, in discussion about postmenopausal symptoms. 100 percent as well. Okay, so number nine is a slow heart rate. So this is kind of intuitive. Mm -hmm. So the thing that drives your energy or increases your energy the most would also increase things like norepinephrine in your heart rate. So when you have hypothyroidism, your actually heart regular heart rate goes down. You have something called bradycardia. And this mm -hmm. can lead to fatigue, being short of breath, potentially even syncopal episodes where you faint because your heart rate goes so low. Yeah, if your heart rate's going down, you're thinking, wow, I'm an elite athlete now, even yeah. though I never go to the gym. You might just have hypothyroidism. Probably. <laughs> Okay. Uh, and number 10, menstrual irregularities. Okay. Those are heavily controlled with the hormone system and when you start disrupting one hormone system, it's going to affect other hormone systems and so your regular menstruation cycle is going to be disrupted so you might notice that as well. So those are the top 10 signs or symptoms of hypothyroidism. hypothyroidism. And so kind of kind of what is it or why do we get it? So the number one cause is something called Hashimoto's thyroiditis. We talked about a little bit in our autoimmune mm -hmm. um, video that we just did where your, your body has little things that attack your thyroid so it reduces its ability to make um, thyroid hormones, so T3 and T4. Other common causes are things like iodine deficiency, which um, is becoming a little more common mm -hmm. with the new kinds of salts. Uh, a lot of people were getting yeah. their iodine from regular yeah. table salt, but now yeah. we into fancy salts like mm -hmm. sea salt and pink salt and all the rest of it. Um, radiation treatment, if you have radiation to your thyroid, that can make you hypothyroid, as well as certain medications. So that's kind of the cause. And I, I commonly see people who've had thyroidectomies for thyroid cancer. Right. Now, by definition, you are hypothyroidism. You right. have hypothyroidism because we removed your thyroid, which lives in your neck. That's been removed because cancer is a common place to get cancer. It's very treatable, right. very curable by thyroidectomy, right. uh, but that will now render you hypothyroid. Right, we, and we do have a whole video on hypothyroidism. Yes. Just the last couple of things, how do you diagnose it? Well, it's usually with a blood test, mm -hmm. or we look at TSH and T4. So TSH is essentially a signal that tells us to make more T4. So if you have, if you have low T4, and high TSH, your, your body is, is not able to communicate properly to make more of your thyroid hormone. I like the endocrine system like that. It's very it's, interesting. It's, it's a control system. It's just like yeah. your thermos in your house, right? You set it to a temperature. You mean your thermostat? Thermostat. <laughs> your thermos. thermos. It's like your thermos. thermos. Thermostat. Coffee, get hot. They're, they have those now. <laughs> they awesome. plug into a USB. Awesome. The thermos that controls the temperature. Sure. Yeah, they do. They're That's rechargeable. Awesome. Uh, so the thermostat okay. in your house. Uh, once the temperature gets up to a certain level or down to a certain level, it turns on or off your air conditioner or your heater. Right. That's a control system. That's the way the endocrine system works in your, in your body. Right. And treatment-wise, obviously a little bit of it depends on what your cause is, but most commonly the treatment is to replace the thyroid hormone that your body can't make with something called levothyroxine. It's a very common medication mm -hmm. and has to be tweaked, obviously. It's very not trivial getting that just right. That no. That just right. Yeah, it's, it's fussy for sure. Yeah. And it speaks to how complicated our bodies are, but it is a treatable condition. I think a lot of times we're on here like, hey, sorry you have this. Yeah. There's nothing you can do. Yeah. You know, good luck. Um, at least this is treatable. Yeah, treatable. And uh, and this is one of the medications with one of our patients when we're doing our me yes. post-op medication. We're always careful to include that thyroxine because yeah. if you miss a day or you get out of whack from that sort of steady state that you're in, it can really mess up your levels. There you go. If you like this video, please like it, subscribe to our channel, leave a comment about your experience with hyperthyroidism. This is very common. Probably a bunch of our viewers are, are dealing with this right now. For sure. I think it's like, one, I think it's like, I don't know. I don't yeah. Don't say it. Don't, Don't say it. it. <laughs> Someone will say it. Someone, Someone will tell us. Tell us. Uh, but it's probably in our video that we did I with our endocrinologist. Uh, remember, you are in charge of your own health. See you next time.